Computer pirates targeted in a massive crackdown on counterfeit goods. Defending the beaches, archaeologists accuse a council of wanton vandalism. And it's down to earth with a bang for the preacher who took to the skies. <laughs> and a prayer to preach the gospel. But instead of spreading the word, he spread panic among people living on a housing estate below. John Holm, who's a lay preacher at Salisbury, strapped a contraption called a paramotor to his back, intending to fly over the city, booming the word of God through a microphone. But it didn't go quite to plan. Preaching the gospel from on high, but not for long. John Holm dice with death as he weaved in and out of houses at Castle Road in Salisbury. Gone from sight, and they think they've lost him. But fate smiled and he survived. Well, I didn't really have too much time to think about what I was doing. I just did it, really, and I relied on my instincts. And I also believe that God showed himself strong on my behalf because I kept my nerve and I flew between the houses straight through one and then through another and I was negotiating between them all the time going upwards at the same rate as the houses. The approach wasn't ideal. It was touch and go. But he kept his nerve and survived unhurt. It wasn't only the Lord who joined him for a safe landing. He was arrested and ended up in court with a fine of more than a thousand pounds for flying too close to a populated area. I had no idea he was in trouble. I just thought he was mad because he seemed so comfortable and self-assured of what he was doing. He obviously acted in a very um, non-aviation manner. It was quite reckless in fact. And he's very, very lucky um, not to have caused damage to himself and to other people's property. I thought, God, what do I do? There was nothing I could do. I couldn't go any higher. I'm not denying that I, uh, I, I was um, inadvertently reckless, um, but my, uh, my intentions were good. He may be grounded now, but his idea does have its followers. Yeah, if somebody came down my street out of the sky preaching the word of God to me, I'd be more inclined to believe it, I think, yeah. Uh, but I think the propeller's a bit of a giveaway that it's not a miracle. Put your love in my heart so I can love people, even people who hate me. John Holm has decided to take up flying lessons, but for now he's content to have his wings clipped and preach the gospel on the streets instead. Jane Chandler in Salisbury for Meridian Tonight. Amen. Amen indeed. Well, John Holm joins us now live from our Salisbury studio. John, a witness claimed your face was, and I quote, frozen with fear as you flew your motorised parachute. How frightened were you? Well, Fred, I really didn't have too much time to be frightened. Um, I was obviously concerned to uh, navigate between the houses. Um, I, I, I was nervous. Uh, that would be wrong to deny that. But I, I wasn't frozen with terror. I'm not frightened of dying. <laughs> but, but was it on... I mean, perhaps other people might be there. I mean, you, you, could have, you could have killed one or two others. I mean, was it on reflection a daft thing to do? Well, yes, I suppose it was, but I don't really, I didn't actually see anybody um, near me, and if, if you were to see the statements that were made by the people, nobody stated that I came anywhere near them. The, there was one lady who was very concerned about the safety of her bird table, though. Yes. You almost clipped an electric uh, power cable at one stage, didn't you? It, was, it may have been a telephone or a power cable. As I was at the top of the houses, yes. um, that, that was in front of me. But let's not be picky. What, what, what training did you have before you, you attempted this? Well, I did have a couple of days down in, in uh, Brighton, near Brighton, with the suppliers of the equipment, and also a local person um, who's got experience. Um, I paid him to give me some private tuition. Well, I do admire your intentions, I really do. I mean, do you intend to go on spreading the gospel uh, in this way in the future? I intend to go on spreading the gospel, um, and uh, I don't think that we need to use bait that uh, is inappropriate for the fish we're trying to catch. The uh, methods used 100 years ago are not really appropriate for today. And um, Jesus said, go into all the world and preach. I don't expect that people are going to come into church if you just open the doors. We need to go to them. So, so how will you be doing it in the future then? What, what, what other novel ways have you got in mind? Well, um, I've spoken to the Press Association about this. If, if anybody out there uh, would like to donate an airship to me, um, I'll learn to fly it. And uh, I'd be very uh, honoured to use that for preaching the gospel. So, so we're appealing for an airship. 
We are. It may not be the easiest thing to find. I gather your own firm, in fact, paid for the for the paramotor. Are they are they cross with you for for this sort of publicity? Oh, not at all. No, um, no. not at all. No, I think they think any publicity is good publicity. <laughs> I, I haven't brought any disgrace to the company. No. And they only paid for it because I achieved a, a very very high level of sales, which. Um, well, it wouldn't have been achieved normally. I believe that God and, gave me the ability to do that. spreading the word of God. John Holm, nice to talk to you. Pleasure. Thank you very much, Jay. Bye -bye. Hello there, welcome back. Chris, as you can see, is uh, lining up ready to bring us the sport. Uh, now, what will you remember from the news in 1998? Will it be the plight of farmers facing bankruptcy due to plunging prices, or maybe the butchers in the south defying the government's ban on selling beef on the bone? Or maybe you'll look back at this year in a lighter vein. Do you remember the inventor who turned his sofa into a car? Today we begin our look back on the highlights of 1998. <laughs> he wanted to spread the word of God from on high. So lay preacher John Holm took to the skies to preach the gospel propelled by a giant fan. But in doing so, he spread panic among families living on the housing estate below. He landed safely enough, but was arrested by police and fined £1,300 for flying too close to a populated area. So, looking back, does John regret reaching for the skies? I met him again at an airfield near Salisbury. I was set up by God, really. I, I didn't intend to fly through that estate, but it was my first flight. Um, but he's used it, and uh, I'm really, really blessed by that. And it's given me opportunities to preach all over the world. Now, since then, you've actually got your pilot's license here, so it's been quite a year for you. Yes, I, I got my pilot's license, um, and also this year, God has uh, instructed me to start a, a church in a, in a housing estate in Salisbury. And we've connected the two together. Nowadays, nobody speaks about the way they feel about things. And Pontius Pilate turned around to Jesus and said, what is truth? Well, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father except through me. As a believer in Jesus Christ, I'm often accused of being a bigot, but all I'm doing is saying what Jesus said. He said he's the only way to God. And I want to tell you, my friend, that unless you put your trust in Jesus Christ, then you will not have eternal life. Well, it's a question of faith. 